praise the Lord. So, like I said, uh, I want to share a few things that I feel that the Lord has laid on my heart concerning this um, pandemic. Let me start by saying that um, I now listen to less of news because there's no news station you turn to. All that you are going to see, it's on this coronavirus. So I'm not going to spend my whole day hearing about coronavirus. Uh, what we hear either inspires faith or, or fear in our hearts. And I don't want to inspire my heart with fear. So I listen to international news maybe for like 30 minutes and then the local news in the evening for maybe about another 15 minutes and that's it for the whole day. Moreover, most things are even shared on social media. People keep sending things to you. And now I'm beginning to also learn to exercise and keep myself. But more important is that I had to call myself back, you know, when the thing broke out that say, go back to the world and stop paying attention too too much attention to the disease go into the word of god uh, and that is what by the grace of god uh, i have been doing and i want to share some things with with us believers it's so crucial to understand these things because the church by and large hardly teach again and when the Lord teach, what they are teaching is success, how you will be protected, how you will make it. Those are the kind of things that the church teaches today. Things that we have seen now that they are now irrelevant to our life. Uh, my sister Jennifer Pompaski, God bless you. Thank you. I, I see your message. Many of the believers are not even raised to understand Bible, to understand the move of God. We have largely raised believers that have only learned how to say amen to prayer, that think that their seed or money is all they need to get the attention of God. Those are the kind of believers that we have today. And it's so you can readily see it when you go online, that um, people will not watch a video and they will be commenting. They will not read a text and they will be commenting. It's because we have not been brought up any longer to do detailed study of the Word of God, to do detailed research of the Word of God. In the Western world now, many are raising false alarm against vaccine, that once the vaccine comes now for these, people should not take it. It is the Antichrist and, and so on. You know, how foolish can that be? Because uh, Antichrist is not the problem now. Uh, vaccine is not the problem. <laughs> Sin is the problem. It, it does not matter how careful you are about uh, vaccine. If you are living in sin, you will follow the Antichrist. That, that is as simple as that. But just, I'm just trying, I'm saying this to buttress the point that we are either have not been taught. <coughs> Or we have not, or we have been wrongly taught. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, straight away, let me share a few things to you about this uh, pandemic. Number one, it is from God. I've heard some people say, "No, it can't be from God. How can somebody something like this be from God? It, it can't be from God. Our God is good. Our God is loving." <laughs> yeah, when people speak like that, they speak out of their ignorance that they don't actually know God. And I'm going to quickly begin to show you. Satan does not have power over nature. You know, it is God who created the earth. The earth belongs to the Lord. The Bible has never said the earth belongs to Satan. The world system is under the control of Satan. But the earth is fully under the control of God. There's a difference between the world and the earth. So the earth has to do with geography, has to do with a physical place. 
the world has is a system by which human beings run their affairs, which is largely and truly satanic because it is under the prince of the power of the air. But the art belongs to the Lord. So when you look at the Bible in Genesis chapter 6, God was fed up with men on the face of the earth and God was going to destroy the earth. And so God asked Noah to make an ark and when the time came, God sent, uh, sent rain on the face of the earth and he destroyed the entire world except for eight persons. Can you imagine that? You know, because we've not witnessed certain things before, we, we do not understand how God works. It was God who destroyed the earth, who killed every single man on the face of the earth in the days of Noah. It was God. It wasn't Satan. You can't find Satan doing that. Satan doesn't have that capacity. Satan didn't create the earth. And so the earth is not subject to Satan. Satan created a world system. And the world system is under the prince of the power of the earth. So that's correct. But the earth belongs to the Lord. So it was God that caused rain to rain and destroy the ancient world, leaving only eight people. Imagine that time. Some of them may be saying, oh, it's Satan. But why did God do that? Because they were living in sin. Because they did not acknowledge God. Because they mixed the seed of the Son of God with the daughters of men. That's a topic for another day. But they were clearly living in sin. And they had opportunity for repentance. But they did not. And so God brought about that. It was God. Number two, when God was going to visit Sodom and Gomorrah with fire from heaven, it was God that sent fire from heaven. It was God who destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It wasn't Satan. But it happened because they were living in sin. It happened because they will not yield to God. But nonetheless, it was God. I'm, I'm going to give you several examples of the workings of God that may not be convenient for man, but nonetheless is God, so that people can understand. You see, it is only ignorant preachers. When I hear some preachers saying that uh, this uh, virus should go back to where it came from, um, that it is from the devil and so on. It just clearly shows that these people are far away from the Bible. If your pastor is telling you that this pandemic is from the devil, uh, he simply tells you that your pastor is very far away, far away from the word of God. God is in charge of the earth, fully in charge of the earth. So in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, God destroyed them. Now, were there no righteous people there? There were righteous people there. But in the first two instances, did you notice one thing? God rescued or saved or delivered Noah. God rescued, saved, delivered Noah and his family. So God saved the righteous. In the case of Sodom and Gomorrah, God was going to even spare it if God would find seven, ten righteous people. But you see, eventually, God actually um, speared Lot from destruction. So even though it was an act of God, you could see that God speared Lot. God did not destroy Lot with them. Now, when you look at the children of Israel, you will also remember, I think it is in, um, let me check this, in Numbers, I think it's in it's Numbers chapter 25. Numbers chapter 25. See, I want to take my time uh, to build this so that 
believers can understand uh, what the Lord is doing. God told uh, Balak, attempted to cause the children of Israel and invited Balaam to do the cursing. But Balaam did not succeed. There is no enchantment against Jacob. There is no divination against Israel. So what happened? Balaam eventually taught Balak something to do. And I want you to pay attention to it. This is in Numbers chapter 25. He taught him to look for beautiful women to introduce to the camp of the children of Israel so that they can fornicate and commit adultery. He says once they, once they start doing that, their God will be the one that will fight against them. And in, in Numbers 25, by the end of the plague, look at verse, um, let me read verse 8. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and trust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. It was a plague. But where was this plague from? From God. The plague came from God. Why? His children were living in sin. They were committing adultery. That were committing fornication. And so God sent this plague. So I'm, I'm showing us. Because I want us to be clear with this. That this thing is fully from God. Know that we are not, I'm not guessing. I'm not second guess. I don't have a doubt about what I'm sharing with you. 100% from God. Now if you read verse 9 of that Numbers 25. He says, and those that died in the plague were 20 and 4,000. 24,000 people. 24,000 people died in the plague. 24,000 people died in the plague. So you can see the number. Yet, it was from God. It's only when people do not <laughs> understand the workings of God that they begins to say things like, um, oh, no, 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 no. God cannot do this. This is certain from the devil. In fact, when you, when you speak like that, you are actually giving the devil credit that he does not actually have. God is fully in charge of the earth and uh, there is nothing the devil can do. On the earth, it is God who is in charge. In terms of the world system, Satan is behind the world system, and there is no doubt about that. When you look at, uh, I want to ask you, who killed Ananias and Sapphira? Was it Satan, or was it God? Who killed Ananias and Sapphira? It was also God. Why? They were living in sin. They were living in sin. And that is why God, uh, they, they sinned and God struck them for the people to fear and for the people to know. Then you will also remember that when David counted the number of the children of Israel, which God said that they should not count when he counted them, God visited them with an angel, uh, an angel of death. And at the end of it all, 70,000 people had been killed. 70,000. I'm going to read also. Let me, let me look for uh, the passage. Now, in... Second Samuel chapter 24. I will read from verse 10. And David's heart smote him after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have seen greatly that I have done. I have seen greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, 
take away my iniquity or take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done foolishly. For when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet God, David seer, saying, Go and say unto David, Thus said the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So God came to David and told him, and said unto him, Shall seven years of famine, now look at this, seven years of what? Of famine. Who, was, who will bring the famine? God. Come unto thee in the land, or will thou flee three months before thy enemies, while they pursue thee? Or that there be three days pestilence in thy land? Now advise, and see what answer I shall return that sent me. Now look at the three options God gave to David. Should he have famine for seven years? God was going to bring famine. Should he have his enemy pursuing him for three months? God was going to be behind it. Or should he have pestilence for three days? Pestilence for three days. And God gave him those three options. And David said unto God, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent, look at it, L look at, so the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel from morning even to the time appointed. And there, and there died of the people from Dan to Bathsheba, 70,000 men. Who sent the pestilence? God. God sent this pestilence. And 70,000 died. 70,000. In verse 16, And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said unto the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the treasure place of Aruna, the Jebu site. It was an angel that was behind their destruction. It was an angel that was behind the killing. An angel of death sent by the Lord. So stop giving credit to the devil for what he didn't do. This is from God. And God at every single point in history does visit people with plague, with pestilence, with trouble. When they have forsaken him, when they have turned their back on him, when the people are living in sin. This is the word of God. It was pestilence. It was, this is, what we are going through is from God. May I also shock you further. This is the beginning. We have not seen anything yet. You see, in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, we have seven seals, seven bowls, and seven trumpets. When the fourth bowl when the content is poured on the face of the earth, the Bible says that one fourth of the people will die. If the world population will be 8 million at that time, then 2 billion, or 8 billion I mean to say, then 2 billion people will die. No prayer can stop it. Nothing can stop it. This is clearly from God. So everything that is going to be visited on the face of the earth is going to come from God. Earthquakes, everything. Did you see anywhere Satan is sending earthquake on anybody? He doesn't have power over the earth. He only controls the world system. Satan has no power on the face of the earth. Only controlling the world system. So I'm just trying to establish that these things comes from the Lord. 
So when you look throughout the scripture, it's always God that brings plague, pestilence upon his people. But I want to believe that um, it, it has a message for the body of Christ. I believe that the church um something there's something the church needs to learn and let me read something to us from the book of Acts chapter 11 verse 27 acts book of acts chapter 11 and verse 27 now look at it and in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch and there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great death throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Let me stop there. That's, I'm stopping at verse 28 for now. I just read Acts chapter 11, verses 27 and 28. Agabus predicted that there will be um, famine in the land in, and he said throughout the world. Throughout the world. Now as at this time Paul was on the face of the earth. Apost Paul the apostle was still on the face of the earth. The church was still far much more stronger they know the truth than the church that we have today. How come they didn't stop it with prayer? Because they knew it was something that could not be stopped by prayer. It was an act of God. Now, why? God didn't explain to anybody here. Why will God allow famine to come on the face of the earth? We don't know. At this time, God didn't reveal the reason. We don't know. So there are certain things God does not owe us to explain to us. He is our maker. We are created. He is the creator. He owes us no explanation. The, 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 um, when the potter is making a pot or something from the clay, he doesn't owe the clay to explain to the clay what he's doing. So let this be let this settled in our heart that this is God. But I want to say to you that the, the revelation, the prophecy of what was going to happen was given to the church. It is the church today that understands what is going. I know generally when I say church, I don't mean that churches all over the world understand what is going, but the truth is still within the body of Christ. There are those that have clear understanding of what God is doing at this time on the face of the earth. Let me say to you, if you are a child of God, you have nothing to be, to be afraid of. If you are a child of God, if you are walking in Christ, you have absolutely nothing to be fearful for. So this thing... The Bible says it came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then when you read verse 27, it says, Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. So, because the church had that information, because they received that prophecy, they responded appropriately. So, where the famine is not... Um, heavy it's not too serious they were able to send resource relief and help to people in other places where the famine was quite devastating so the church responded appropriately to this they didn't blame god they didn't begin to pray against it they responded to one another i feel that's what we should be doing at this time i think we should re we should respond in love to one another one of the things, again, I believe God is, is saying to the church or God is doing in the church now is that God wants to deliver us from the idol 
that is called church building. Our church buildings have become idols. Pastors can spend billions on church building, but they cannot feed the poor in that building. It is that sad. So we have been worshipping men instead of God. Now God has taken us by force away from the worship of men. My prayer is that the church will not go back to these idols after this pandemic. See, whether you like it or not, not everybody will die. Not everybody will die. This virus will not kill everybody. This virus will be overcome. There are more to come. More worse things than this virus will come on the face of the earth. More, far more worse things will still happen on the face of the earth. But as a child of God, you have nothing to fear. So, the church must do away from our idolatry. The worship of buildings. No matter what your idol is, even people that say that, oh, we are not worshipping uh, uh, Mary, we are not worshipping this, we are, that's what you are doing. Whether you agree or you don't agree, the worship of God is in spirit and in truth. It has nothing to do with images. It has nothing to do with any of those things. There's no precedence to all of those nonsense in the scriptures. So we must do away from this love of money. Is it not sad that People are not working. Many people are in their own suffering. Even churches that you would think they should have had enough. All they are developing at this time is applications to receive money from people. From where do you want people to get money? They are ready to make people to death. The Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. Many of our buildings and gatherings, they are not about God. They are, they are about money. Truth be told. It's all about money. The current church system is mostly about money and not about Jesus. That is, the, that is what is prevalent. And I believe God is Showing us that is against that system. is breaking that system. I pray we don't go back to it. So you can see that the people who never prepared you for any plague. They didn't prepare you for any pestilence. Of course they were not hearing God. All they are still interested now is your money. They don't care. They don't want to know the fear that you have now. They don't want to know what you are going through. It's still all about money. I told some people, I said, they are not closing church down. The church is well and alive. What is being closed down is church building. Our idols, those idols we worship, some people will go on pulpit and say, I stand on this altar. God, everything I ask for on this altar. That is not an altar. There's no altar anywhere. That is a satanic altar. The real altar is your body. That is where the Holy Spirit dwells. The altar is in the temple. And ye are the temple of God. God likened the human body to the temple. He didn't liken church building to the temple. But we have become so used to it. We have so much even idolized these buildings. So people don't want to do something that is wrong in church building. But once they leave church building, they feel that they are, they are free to do anything they like. What you don't realize is that the place where you should not do something wrong is your body. Because that your body is the temple of God. Your body is the temple of God. And so you must be holy in your body, not in that building. God, through this pandemic, is delivering the church from the idols of church building. From the idols of men of God. Our services have been about men, not about Jesus. Our gathering have not been about Jesus. They've been about men. And God is dealing with the church at this time. 
You see, the, the world, they are, just, they are just being sacrificed. We are the real problem. Let me be honest with us. The church is the real problem. The church is what God is dealing with. It's not the world. But it has to come on this scale. It has to come on this scale for the body of Christ to realize it. But we have not yet realized it. Many so-called ministers of God are waiting for this to be over so that they can go back to their business. So that they can go back to their business as usual. I have a message for you. It will no longer be business as usual. We will no longer do it the way we've been doing it. God has come. You see, he is a jealous God. <laughs> we don't know God. He is a jealous God. He will not tolerate that idol, that idol that we call church building. That idol that we call men of God. He will not tolerate it any longer. He has tolerated, tolerated it long enough. God will not tolerate it. And that's why we are having what we are having. God is fully in charge. This is God visiting his planet. Now everybody has to look for something. Even people who don't believe God now are beginning to tune into God. I'm sharing messages with unbelievers. They are receiving it now. They are receiving it. <laughs> ah, so as believers, we must... We must take advantage of this. The passage I read in Numbers chapter 25. Guess what happened? Why, you know, 24,000 people died. The one I read in 2 Samuel, 70,000 people died. In both cases, it was God that visited the people. Those were his own people. That's why I want to warn you. I don't want your blood to be on me. I'm warning you, please. If you are a Christian, if you identify with the name of Jesus and you are living in sin, repent. If you are engaging secretly in sin, this is the time to repent. You know what happened? In Numbers 25, the scripture says, let me read it to us. Let me read what happened in that Numbers 25 to us so that we can take warning. In Numbers 25, you will see the foolishness of sin. Number one, they enter into the problem in the first place because of sin. Then Numbers 25 verse 6 says, And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses. And in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Can you imagine? People are crying to God. They are saying, Lord, solve this pandemic. Lord, we are dying. You know, because, this, and all this happened within hours. Maybe two, three hours. 24,000 people have died. So people were crying because they don't know why people were dying. So, but they knew that this has to be God. So they were crying to God. So everybody gathered together and they were praying. And they were saying, God, have mercy on us. God, have mercy on us. It was at that time that this man had the courage to still take a, another woman into his own tent and be having adultery or fornication with her. In the, in the midst of this, brethren, if you are living in sin, you may not be spared. I'm talking to God's children. I'm not talking about people of the world. If you are living in sin, some of you, God has been speaking to you about divorce. You will not listen. Some of you, God has been speaking to you about lying. You will not listen. Some of you have been fornicating secretly. You have been engaging in, in all manner of adultery secretly. All manner of sinful practices. Stealing. My brothers and sisters, repent. We have entered into a dangerous phase in the history of mankind. 
we have reached a, we are now in a different phase towards the coming of Christ. Don't toy with sin. Don't joke with sin. Don't play with sin. Let me show you what happened to this man. Verse 7. And when Phanias, the son of Eliasa, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through. The man of Israel and the woman through her belly, so the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. Can you see that? What stopped the plague? Phanias had to kill the people who were living in sin. You will think, oh, this is too hard. That is the problem today. You don't want to listen to the truth again. You don't like somebody that condemns sin. All you are looking for, you know, there is this false doctrine of encouragement. Somebody say, no, 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 all these messages, uh, they, are, they are too strong. Just encourage people. Um, I ask them, how many people have you won to the kingdom of God with your encouragement? Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost. He said, repent, all of you, for the remission of your sins. Jesus Christ came. He said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. John the Baptist came. He said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Paul said, knowing the terror of God will persuade men. Knowing the terror of God. Brethren, God is a terror. I wish you can understand what I'm saying. It is high time we all stop playing with God. It is high time we take our life serious. Don't think you are better than the people who have died so far. This plague has not ended. The pandemic is still on. Don't think you are better. Don't think you are better. It is when we deal with sin that certain things can be put on hold. But I want to say to you, as we approach the end time, prayer cannot even stop certain things. Because the world we continue to live in sin. When they started passing laws that a man and a woman can be married, <laughs> they don't know that God is watching. When all of a sudden, you cannot say homosexuality is a sin. Somebody is saying they are going to sue you. They are going to fight you. It is a sin. Do your worst. It is a sin. But we, people are living in society where you can't say it's a sin. And they are afraid. You will even be censored on social media. You know, when you begin to shoot pornographic videos at astronomical rates, and the devil kept pumping those things out, God was watching. As the church deceives people also, as you trick people in the church, from Sunday to Sunday, it is success. From Sunday to Sunday, it is money. God is watching. Now, it's time for judgment. God is judging the earth. God is judging the earth. God is achieving many things through this pandemic, believe it or not. Many things have been achieved during this pandemic. Brethren, <laughs> do not live in sin. Repent today. This is an act of God. You will have nothing to fear if you are in him. He told the children of Israel, if I see the blood, I will pass away. If you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, I want to invite you to do that today. If you don't know him, I want to invite you to do that today before I lead others to pray against this pandemic. And you will see that we are going to pray intelligently. We are going to pray with knowledge. But I don't know whoever may be listening to this. You may be listening to it live or you may be listening to it after it had been saved on the social media. In case you want to rededicate your life, or you want to accept Jesus. Or you are crying to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, save me. There are sins you have been struggling with. You can't get rid of them. You want to pursue him with all of your heart now. Can I pray with you? Can I pray with you? I want you to just pray with me. And say, Father, I thank you for your word that I've heard today. I want to thank you 
for the mercy to hear this word. That I am alive to make amends. That I can hear words of repentance. Message of repentance today. Father, I am grateful to you. I want to cry to you, Father. Please have mercy on me. Forgive me. Cleanse me from my unrighteousness. There are sins I've been struggling with. There are secret sins in my life nobody knows about. Unforgiveness in my heart. Lord, please have mercy on me. Please wash me clean. Please cleanse me, Father. I confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. I bring my life under subjection to Jesus Christ. Let him reign. Let him have dominion over me. Fill me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Fill me, Father, with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. If you pray like that, you may want to inbox me. You may want to message me so that we can have further interaction. For the rest, I'm just going to pray for you. Father, I commit this your children into your hands. I have delivered your word unto them. Many are scared. Many are afraid. But Lord, today, I speak peace into their heart. I pray that the peace of the Lord that surpasses all understanding will comfort their heart now in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that every heart that is afraid, you will comfort them in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that they will be well positioned even at this time in Jesus' name. Lord, they will not go with this storm in the name of Jesus. They will fulfill their days and your purpose for their lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' name, I've prayed. Amen.